That's right. It. Okay, so uh, yes, um, I started riding these uh, electric unicycles, right? And uh, because I'm cheap and I need new batteries, I uh, I started to try and repair some of these on my own. So you open them up, and then um, well, there are a lot of these uh, cylindrical cells inside them called 18650s. The they're lithium-ion cells. And uh, you can't just, uh, they're not just attached by, you know, the usual battery spring kind of thing that you see in most appliances. Uh, they have these nickel strips that are spot welded onto them. So it, the, the strips look like that, right? And then you have to weld them on. Uh. So in order to fix these packs, I need to peel them off and uh, weld new ones on after uh, replacing the cells. So... <coughs> Um, a spot welder is a resistance welder. So what you do is you short through your joint, um, something like a thousand amps, uh, and that melts the metal around that area in just that spot. And it finishes very quickly, like less than a second. And then you have your joint, right? So, um, well, uh, Uh, yeah, so um, to generate that high current, we use a microwave oven transformer, which we salvaged from one of the microwaves that died in the Penang flood. Um, ripped out the secondary coils. So uh, the microwave oven transformers are actually step-up transformers. They take a certain, uh, they take 240 volts in, and then they spit out something in the kilovolt range. So I removed the secondary coil, uh, and and um, replaced it with these thick wires instead. So now it's a step down transformer. So um, it steps down from 240 volts to two volts. So if you touch these two probes, right, and press that, that green button over there, you won't die. It's two volts, it won't kill you. Um, but if you pass it through metal, um, it will spit out um, the equivalent of, well, let's see. 240 divided by 2 is about 120, right? So you take 13 amps from this plug and then you times 120. So you get something in the 1.1 or 1.2 kilo amp. <laughs> Demo, yeah? Sure, sure. <laughs> hey, wait, wait. I'm getting there, right? So, um, right. So uh, the guides I saw online had some Arduino controller and I was too lazy to figure out how to program an Arduino. So. I went online and it turns out AliExpress is selling these things, right? Spot welder control panels. And they're designed nicely to wire up to micro transformers, right? Yeah, who would have thought? Yeah, so there's a nice wiring diagram there. You wire everything up. So um, over here, you see the microwave oven transformer and the wire and the, you know, the welding wires that go out. Uh, the blue are inputs to the transformer, which is switched by um, the board, right? And this, uh, the, this goes to the mains. So this little transformer over here steps down to 9 volts AC, which is then rectified by the board for whatever its chips need um, to operate. And then uh, it has a little... Um, encoder, I mean LCD screen and an encoder button thing so you can configure it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, um, the thing that this thing supports is, um, uh, yeah. So, over here you see, um, a label of their control panel, right? Um, so it goes time one, current one, <coughs> spacing, time two, current two, welding. And so time one and current one are actually the time and current for the first pulse. And then its spacing is the interval be between the first and second pulses. And then time two and current two are the time and current for the second pulse. Uh, so why do we need two pulses for spot welding, right? Um, Basically, when you press your metals together, um, they're kind of rigid, so you can't get them to press together very nicely. So it sends the first pulse, which softens your metals just enough that you can get a closer bond. 
and then waits you know, for you to get into position and fires the second pulse. And that forms your verb. And uh, last one, it was a bit cryptic, but uh, it's a load and save profile thing. You can save like, I, th I think like 90 profiles or something. I don't know. It was quite, an, quite a large number of profiles that you could set. I've only got um, three set right now. So, yeah, demo. Here is my nickel strip, right? There's already one weld in it. Oh, I finally managed to pop it. Yeah, nickel strip. And so what you can do is, um, ah, you don't need a fire extinguisher. <laughs> it's quite safe, it's quite safe. <laughs> yeah, that's what, yeah. <laughs> All right. Why does it look like aerosol? It's too late. Burn and vaporize. So... The packaging looks like it's going to make it worse. I'm more concerned that you need the third hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, I screwed up when making this thing, right? It turns out that I need both hands to hold the spot welder probes. <laughs> so I can't actually hit the green button. Ha, do you need help? You need, uh, you need a foot pedal instead of Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, I'm, I'm... Do you need help? Yes, yes, actually I do need help. Um... Nobody there has to help you, man. Yeah. <laughs> I guess somebody can just press the button from with a stick. Anybody, anybody who's got a stick, long stick, press the button. Anyone's already paid all their insurance deals? Yeah. You just tell me when you're <laughs> confident. Okay, go. There we go, that's oh. it. Press it. Nobody died. Yay, nobody died. And here's your weld. Check the neighbors. <laughs> so, questions? If you're wired to the battery terminal, then where do you put the other cables? Ah, good question. So, um, um, usually you will put both terminals down in parallel onto the battery. Uh, I mean, you, you put this on first, right? And then you put it, uh, put two of them. So you make two joints at once. It, the circuit goes um, from one probe um, through this um, into the battery, just the positive terminal, right? And comes back out the same terminal. So it doesn't actually pass through the battery. Yeah. And uh, some of these strips, they, um, they come with a little slit in the middle so that uh, it forces more current to pass through um, the battery side instead of taking a short path through this. Did you find the, can you buy those strips, uh, the nickel strips uh, mm. on AliExpress as well? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're very cheap. Something like $10 gets you a whole bag. Yeah. Pre, pre or just a... Ah, um, you can get them as ribbons or you can uh, get them in the ladder shape. So that, um, you know, if you pack your lithium ion cells, right, because 18650s, the cylindrical cells can only be packed together in so many ways, yes. right? So you can either have your parallel packing in which it's just a straight ladder yep. or the offset packing. So it goes, it shifts in like that, right? And the angle is always fixed. So they'll give you that, that right. ladder shape as well. Yep. So, you, so you just pack that very quickly. Yeah, 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 that's right. And... Um, well, they also give you, um, I mean, you, you can buy them for either without spacers or with spacers. So in which case, they give you an extra millimeter where, where you can put your plastic spacers. Yeah. Oh. Uh, for this nickel strip, I, I saw that uh, there are the fake ones. Yes, there are fake ones. I don't know how to identify them properly. Uh, nickel coated. Yeah, 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 that's right. And actual nickel. Yeah, 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 it's quite difficult to tell. I, um, so... Uh, instructions online were to uh, grind it to remove the nickel coating. If uh, to determine whether it, it was nickel coated, first you grind it to remove the nickel coating, and then you soak it in salt water. And supposedly it's going to rust because it's steel, right? What happened was all my water turned brown, and this came out clean. I don't know what. I don't know what's going on. Uh, it's magnetic. It's definitely magnetic. So if you put some of these lying around. Um, the current from this will make them jump around. Mm. So, yeah. it's, so it's steel then and it's just corroding so ferrous. I don't know, maybe. Yeah. It could be the whole galvanic corrosion going on. Yeah. One of them is a sacrificial anode. I don't know. 
And so how do you, for the final connection at each mm. end of the battery pack, yep. how do you connect that onto a proper thick wire? Ah, um, these things are all solderable. Yeah, so you solder them onto a BMS. Uh, let me just go and grab the BMS. Excuse me a second. Yeah, so the BMS for this particular battery pack, right? Uh, which is about this size, yeah? It comes like that. And um, there are spots for you to solder each battery tab onto okay. them. Yeah, so that you can handle balancing and monitoring of each cell. And then, well, your thick wire comes here. Then uh, the BMS also has a charge and discharge cutoff. So, you know, if anything goes wrong, you can just cut power. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs>